I'm James Pick, and I am the Business Development Manager at Copters, working with survey and construction businesses throughout the UK, enabling them to use drones for their survey applications. I've been working in the survey industry for the past five years after graduating from Newcastle University after studying mapping and surveying. And this is why I first came into contact with drones, uh, using it in my final year dissertation in a coastal monitoring um, application comparing traditional methods of data capture with drone data sets. And even back then, the results were really great and it really showed me the potential for drones in the survey world. Joining me today is James Dunform from Fleet UAS and he's the author of the course and here he is to tell you a little bit about himself. Hi there, yeah, so um, so my background sort of is, is more on the drone side initially, um, sort of, so I've been in the industry for about 10 years um, firstly on an academic basis um, and then moved into operations about six years ago. Um, I've worked for uh, two surveying companies um, and the most recent was with Plough and Craven um, and uh, was responsible for integrating drones into their business. Um, and so we were doing a, a lot of different ranges of course, uh, ranges of surveys. So looking at topographical surveys, BIM, railway surveys, um, very, very high accuracy, right, right the way down to sort of five millimeters. Um, and so sort of gained a lot of experience in, in, in this area. Um, and, uh, and before that, I was at um, re uh, remote aerial surveys um, who were also doing a lot of railway based surveys, which is generally some of the hardest stuff that you can do. So um, apart from that, I'm, uh, I'm a keen flyer. So I like flying things and, uh, and also like a, a glass of wine occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> There we are. <laughs> uh, so, uh, James, you've been the author of this uh, this course. Um, what made you want to put this course together? So uh, I guess I saw like a lot of people struggling to be able to achieve sort of reliable, regular accuracy. So you get a lot of construction companies, engineering companies and, and surveying companies. Um, who were employing uh, drone uh, drone pilots to go and do do their work, and there was so much variation. You know, some people some some people would come in and they would get you know poor quality data. Others would come in and it'd be fantastic. Um, and so it was clearly a lack of um, a lack of consistency in the in the industry and a lack of understanding and education. Um, and so really, what you know, over the last six years, I've been. Um, sort of uh, optimizing the photogrammetry process and really get trying to achieve those sort of highest accuracies and and because of that you know building up that knowledge I sort of really wanted to sort of see you know share that with the industry and and help other people to to do the same. I think that's something which I, I've certainly uh, realized by even talking to the survey community that there is this knowledge gap that Maybe some of the, uh, the the more traditional survey businesses that they, they understand the the importance of collecting highly accurate data, but when transferring that into a photogrammetric or data collected via drone, there is a large knowledge gap there. And hopefully, with this course, it can it can plug that gap in in a meaningful way that afterwards they'll have all that knowledge they need on how to collect good quality, accurate data, how to how to process that and how to make sure that data is of a of a survey grade quality. So so the course you've done, James, is it how does it work? Is it interactive? Is it PowerPoint? What, what does it entail and what would a, a, a potential user um, get from the course itself? Sure. So I, I think it, uh, what I've tried to do is to provide people with enough technical understanding of how the process works. Um, but not too much, because the thing is, what people don't want to be getting into is all the equations and mathematics, which is involved in photogrammetry data, because, you know, you're never going to come across that. But but actually understanding some of the basic mechanics of how it works is very useful um, because it allows you to sort of debug problems as and when they arise. If you've got some basic understanding, that really helps. But really, it's looking at that process. You know, there's, there's several steps through that process going from, you know, uh, installing the control um and collecting the data the photography itself processing that and then extracting that data into cad gis type deliverables um so it, it kind of covers a, a, a quite a practical approach but it's quite interactive so um throughout the course there's a, a bunch of questions and answers um and interactive exercises which um which will hope hopefully just check to see that you're learning the material as you go through <clears throat> but uh, as well as that, there is also a number of what I call sort of rule, rule of thumbs, um, where sometimes, you know, you don't want to have to be able to calculate everything speci specifically, but what it allows you to, to do is say, okay, I need a 
you know, a 15 millimeter survey on, on this job. Um, how do you know how, how far your control should be apart? How far your, um, how high you should be flying? What kind of GSD you need? What kind of control you should be needing? And so it really sort of gives you that blueprint of, okay, this is what I need to achieve. This is how I do it. Excellent. I certainly from uh, from looking through the course and going through it, 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 it answered a lot of the questions I get asked on a daily basis. Well, how much control do I need to put out? Where do I need to put it out? What flying how do, do I need to fly it? All them general questions, which are almost um, so common in the industry. Um, it ticks all them boxes and, and it, it gives people that information to know that when they are in the industry, they know what they're doing and they know they can collect that good quality data at the end of it. So what you're saying, James, is it's not death by PowerPoint. People aren't going to be bored doing it. No, no, it's, it is. It, um, it sort of really guides you through the process. And it's not just going to be, you know, bullet point after bullet point after bullet point. There are all of these interactive exercises throughout that course that will allow you to, to sort of gain that knowledge um, and to sort of um, really it, put to work the, the stuff that you've been learning as you go along. Cool. And, and how long does it take to do? Well, for, for me to write quite a long, long time, um, but for it takes roughly around about 12 hours. Uh, it does depend on, on the students. So some students may get through it a, a little bit quicker, but I would say 12 hours is about, is about well, should be about average. Um, some people may like to take it a bit slower, but, you know, the great thing about these courses, you know, being online is, the, you know, you can do it sort of an hour in the evening. Um, so you don't have to go through the whole lot in one go. You can just do a little bit at a time. And so you can, you know, over a space of two, two or three weeks, um, you could get it done, you know, in your lunch period. And so, and I also imagine that you can, uh, you can have it as a, as a, a, a as a, as a, as some content to draw back on. So if you're in the field and you forget something, um, you can always you keep returning back to it and building that knowledge, and and so it becomes sort of second nature to, uh, to like a lot of us now. Exactly. And, you know, within the course, um, I've, there's a there's a, a cheat sheet uh, for survey accuracies. And so we have a RICS band, uh, you know, RICS accuracy band table. Um, and in there, we've added some extra columns, which shows what kind of control you need to achieve that band, um, what kind of GSD you need to be able to achieve. And then some other little caveats, um, which explain, OK, in this set circumstance, you might need to do that. And in this circumstance, you might need to do that. So um, you've got all of that information right, to, you know, right in front of you. Um, and that will be that will help you on an ongoing basis. And, you know, I guess we hope over the space of a few months of actually applying this stuff, then people will, um, you know, learn it off by heart and, and they won't need to keep going back to it. Excellent. And so who, who's the course aimed at? So really, it's aimed at anyone who wants to be uh, completing the best photogrammetry that they can using drones. Um, whether that's fixed wing or multi rotors, um, it doesn't matter. Um, and we actually cover cover both in, in the early chapters. Um, but anyone who wants to really achieve um, consistent, repeatable and accurate data. So if you know if it's being used to um, construct a piece of railway track, a building, you know, um, you need to, you need to measure something for engineering purposes. Um, then that's that's what you need. You need to be able to trust that data. If you can't trust the data that you're you're, you're modelling from, then you know you've got all of these other add-on problems that can come later on. So um, yeah, it's really important to be able to achieve uh, you know repeatability, and so it's really aimed at those people who who want to sort of uh, do that. I think when I went through it, I think it um, it struck to me how it can be open to anybody from um, the beginning who's just starting off in this journey about learning more about survey um, survey grade accuracies, all the way up to someone who might already have that experience in the survey world and just wants to further their knowledge um, within this realm of survey based um, photogrammetry. I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed doing it. So really, it covers it covers across the full board from entry level personnel all the way up to people just want to expand their expand their knowledge a little bit a little bit more um so if you was to try and sell it to a to a business james what what who should be enrolling on this what can they what kind of results do you think they can get from it and, and what are the real benefits from it yeah so um i think anyone really who wants to be you know wants to be sort of doing the best surveys that they can really should be enrolling on it um but you know i'd expect you know construction companies engineering companies surveying companies um, and also operators you know drone operators because there's a lot of drone operators out there who are doing work for these kinds of clients 
um, and want to be uh, want to be operating at the standards that they will require for their surveying um, surveying output. So. Um, really, yeah, I, th I think it's open for all. Um, and, e you know, even as you say, if you are just starting off, you're starting off with the right um, the right information at the start. Um, and so, you know, there is there's, there's lo lots of information out there. But I really, truly believe, you know, I've, I've been I've, I've integrated drones into a surveying business. Um, you know, we've we, we built it up to five full time pilots and, and we were going out there day after day after day collecting raw data for topographical surveys, BIM surveys, and, and it had to be reliable. So yeah, it's, I, I would say it's for anyone who wants to opt optimize their photogrammetry um, abilities. That's really what it's about. <clears throat> and it's not, it's not specific to say Pix4D or Agisoft. It can be used for anybody using any software, any platform. Exactly. Yeah. So actually, in one of the modules, we look at um, processing software and and look at each. Um, I think we've looked at about five different pieces of software from memory, um, and we looked at all of the different pros and cons of, each, of using each one. So, you know, from my perspective, um, I think it's good to, good for me to sort of explain what the benefits are and. Um, depending on what stage in the journey you're at and what kind of applications you're using it for, then different pieces of software have have different sort of benefits and and um, and sort of drawbacks. So I think, yeah, it's, it's really useful to be able to see that kind of analysis. So when you're starting off, you know, whether you're starting off or you're looking at upgrading your software in the future, you can you can make sure you're using the right kind of things. Absolutely. I think in terms of sort of software is very similar to the hardware as well. It's it's horses for courses, different softwares do do better in different things to other softwares, similarly to when we're looking at sensors and and particular drones for different applications, it all really does depend on a, on the application in hand. And I think looking at the future in terms of drone use, I do see business have, businesses not having one drone for one job. They'll have multiple drones for different jobs and different softwares to, 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 to process through that data. And certainly like a course like this gives everybody that, that full understanding and appreciation that, it's not a one glove fits all application. It's, it's different jobs, different drones, different softwares, different sensors across the full board. Um, anything else you want to add, James, just to uh, to close? Yeah, exactly. And and what you were talking about there regarding the, the different softwares, you know, there are some software which are sort of, um, you know, fit everything, but then they're not optimized for certain certain activities. So, you know, um, you know, you, you mentioned Pix4D. Pix4D is great at everything. It will do everything well. But if you're churning through very large amounts of data um, and you want to import things like laser scanning data, for instance, you're not going to be able to do that in there. So, you know, there, there is pros and cons to all these pieces of software. And, and, you know, choosing the right one is important for you. And you may find that you actually need more than one piece, as you say. You may you may find that for certain things, you'll use one piece of software and for others, you'll use you'll use something else. Um, in terms of other, anything else, I've, I've not, I think we've, we've really covered everything there. But, you know, I do... I, I did put my heart and life and soul into this, um, into this, and um, you know I do think that the, the the information there is very valuable. Um, I believe that you know if you want to be achieving sort of you know very high accuracies, or you want to improve the the quality of your data, you want to be able to improve the tr trustability of that data and and be operating, you know, in that sort of more uh, survey engineering type um, world, then then that you know this course will will definitely help you get there. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, thanks for that, James. And if anybody's interested, then please uh, click on the button below where you'll be able to purchase the course, enroll and start learning more about the geospatial industry involving drones. Thanks very much, James. Awesome.